is that we do not yet have the knowledge of the spiritual resources that have been given to the believer alongside the dynamics of activating them. Number three, the bankruptcy of the, the knowledge of the spiritual resources. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, that God would open our eyes to see the resources that were coordinated to become systems of advantage to the believer and then to have an understanding on how to activate them. Ephesians 1 and verse 3 tells us Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and without delay he went straight to tell them that God had blessed us with all spiritual blessings. All, not some. And he says they reside in heavenly places. So there is a problem there because you do not need them there. So the dynamics of understanding and transporting those resources to be used here and now for your advantage. Many believers do not understand. The average believer cannot tell you the resources that have been given to us by reason of our being grafted into Christ. There are many resources. Only an irresponsible government will send an individual to represent them and not equip them. Is that true? Any government that is sending an ambassador or anyone to promote their interest among the many packages, they ensure and even insist that that person is well equipped. A hospital can have professionals but not have the requisite machinery in terms of gadgets. And you see the hospital misrepresenting. There can be professors in that hospital. But they will tell you the latest machine to diagnose this and that is not there. And so the government, if the government wants to step up the standard in that hospital, beyond training the individuals, they must insist that state of the art materials. And how many of you know that any material that helps and sells in terms of gadgets are not cheap? So for you to know that God plays so much value, you need to understand the extent of resources. When David stood before Goliath, foolish Goliath was looking at his hands and David was saying, no, no, what I hold is only a token. It's a representation of greater resources. I didn't come alone. Goliath said, am I a dog? You come to me with your spheres. And David said, you will soon know. That as I'm standing here, there are resources. Do you believe that? Listen, when you have an understanding of this, you will never, never stand to cry as though one who were left as an orphan. No, no. There are resources beyond our awareness. And it is the assignment of the Spirit of God to search the mind of Christ, the Bible says, and to show us the things that have been freely given. In fact, here's how the Bible puts it. Apostle Peter intelligently presents it. He says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of, our, of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he says, according as his divine power. Is that in your Bible? Hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. But he says, through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. He says, whereby are given to us, here it is, exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. There are resources, ladies and gentlemen. There are resources. There are resources that the church can use to build nations. There are resources. And I'm not just, the least of them is finances. No, God will not insult you to just leave finances. No, that is, that in, in the ranking of spiritual resources, finances is the least. Because you will be learning that money itself is a product. And there is another capital that buys it. He calls it true riches. When I pray for people, I bless them and I tell them, may you never be so poor that all you have is money. Because there are resources in the spirit that are greater than finances. If you doubt me, ask two people in the Bible. One, the rich fool. 
He had money, but there were other things he did not have. Number two, the rich young ruler. He had everything and yet he came to Jesus. He said, there's something I do not have. Good master. There is another kind of resource beyond. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not going ahead of myself, but every time you see people bless in the Bible, they never give anything physical and material. No. Abraham calls all his sons and gives them gifts and says, go. Then he says, Isaac, come. Kneel down. I want to place something on you. Listen. Never give Isaac anything that is recorded. He said, go. What is so powerful about spiritual resources that Esau as an adult will cry? What will make an adult who is already gifted, hard working? He went to the wilderness and brought food so he was not lazy. And he said, Father, such is there nothing left. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways. For step by step. You lead me and I will follow you all of my days. For step by step, you lead me and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God and I will ever follow Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever love you. I will seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways. Step by step, you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. I like this step by step you lead me I will follow you all of my days in ministry step by step you lead me listen to me in addition to all the graces that I've spoken here and the many who will be ministering this is the mandate God gave me in this season for South Africa. That by the Spirit, to show you these three things. This, the understanding of these factors, ladies and gentlemen, will translate any individual, any, to become a greater expression of the glory of God. Never forget our key word, glory. A manifestation of the beauty and the excellence of the spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That when men look at you, you become, you become a study of God. A living epistle. A continuation of their Bible study. They look at your life and the kind, the frame of intelligence that you have imported from the spirit. The dexterity of your life. The order, the beauty, the glory of God. That is the kind of God we must sell to the nations. Please sit down for a few minutes. Just lend me 10 minutes and then we'll be done for tonight. And please do not mind if I still call on my dear sister again at the end of this to still come and bring that song again. I hope you are not tired. You must be spiritual in Jesus' name. 
Now please pay attention. Lisa Paruski Hashana Makusi Atabaranda. Jesus, having spent three and a half years mentoring the disciples who shortly will be translated to apostles, he left them with one instruction. Now you know, but he said, tarry. Information is not enough. Tarry. You have no idea the formation that the gates of hell will bring. I need to show you the resources that are at your disposal. Tarry until ye be endued with power from on high. I've had the honor of traveling across a few nations in Africa and I'm already seeing that Ezekiel 37 formation. It's happening already. From Nigeria to Ghana to South Africa to Kenya to Uganda even to Europe and to America we are seeing the formation of Ezekiel 47. A valley that is full of dry bones. There is an east wind that is already coming to the church. It's coming through apostolic and prophetic voices. Yes, sir. I am telling you this by the spirit of the living God. Man of God, cheer up. You're not wasting your time on your members. I speak to every man of God. No matter how small, how great your congregation is. All is adding together. We are building momentum in the spirit. There is a crescendo, a point in the spirit where an army will rise. Men who were once ordinary rise as worshippers, as businessmen, as captains of industry, as heads of government, even by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 